Welcome again to another session of the journey of Bharatanatyam as we see today in India today. What are the new developments? What are the new trends? What are the new milestones? So much you have learnt and seen in the last modules and sessions and today we focus on how an ancient form has become so new and so relevant even in young India with you. Present day Bharatanatyam is progressing to new avatar while partaking of old structures and substance. Each new person educated, city bred, global is trying to infuse new energy and light into this form. Many have succeeded tremendously as in the case of say Leela Sampson, Alar Melwalli or Malvika Sarukai in giving the same old form a new dimension while others like Gita Chandran or Rama Vedanathan have retained its classical roots and gone back in time to bring back gems of bygone era like Alar Melwalli does with Sangam poetry. Some have used group works like Chandralekha or Leela Sampson to create a new and some have gone beyond solo structure and infused it with group dynamics like B. Bhanumati in Bangalore. What we see are not new Banis but new bodies and groups being created. Bani is now a reference point. Only few retain and guard it without alloying or diluting it. While each one comes with a certain historical reference point called Bani by way of training, they all have tried to create a new. This has happened partly due to demands of each season. So what new work each is capable of presenting? So one looks forward to a star dancer like Alamel Walli or Malvika Sarukai presenting a new work partly because audience wants it, partly because sponsors clamoring for new wine in old bottles or vice versa. But Bharatanatyam remains quintessentially the same. Its structure can be marginally changed but the form is same. Bent knees, legs are bent, the Aramandi position as we call is the style's structural demand. One may make the fan of costume longer so one has to sit less but that is not innovation, that is a shortcut. But the basic position still remains else it cannot be qualified we call Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam as a form allows maximum innovation and interpretation. Its structure, its foundation, its grammar and material are akin to bricks or slabs one can make any house or building with. It is any pattern it can lend itself to. It can be a simple hut, a palace or a stadium. The material is the same, the brick is the same. The basic bhakti element represents its simplicity and beauty. The complex jatis represents tiles and patterns. In the house, Varnam represents its architectural plan as one draws, padams and javlis are the doors and windows to love and soul. Tilana concludes like a roof above one's head and in Mangalam is decorative plants and trees which we plant at home. Thus, how does this traditional material centuries old become modern? Modern is a language not a fashion. Just like in films or clothes, there are few trends and colors, patterns and shapes, so also in Bharatanatyam, there are modern trends and developments. One major development is group work. For over a century, Bharatanatyam was the art of the soloist or at best twins or twosome to show left and right symmetry in poses and stances. Then came a small group of three or four to illustrate a theme. Now they are called the ballet or a group of dancers 20 to 30 in one big production like Kalakshetra in Chennai, Nalanda in Mumbai or Bhanumati's dance company in Bangalore. This solo to group work development took place to fill big spaces, stadium shows, film events where classical forms were used and also to dance to large audiences in a specific dance festival like Khajuraho, Konark or Chidambaram where thousands sit and watch from far. If one person is dancing, unless a big star, audience will not come or become restless. 
Group work affords variety and opportunity for all. In fact, group works are the vogue because once a solo dancer gets established, she then becomes a star. Secondly, all can't become stars, so groups are a good way to include the good, the bad, and the plain ordinary dancer. It also gives students of the institution an opportunity to show their training and accomplishment in art. It showcases a style in multiple numbers. It also covers large stages and spaces. If a theme is undertaken, say from mythology of modern poets, then it is easy to have many characters. So one main development and trend is group work. Second important development and trend is discovering old material and interpreting it, say in way of poetry or in way of material. Worldly uses Sangam poetry and projects same century old verse in new ways or interpretation, sometimes the commentary being in French or even English. She uses works of modern poets like Arundhati Subramaniam of Bombay and poet recites along. So one development and trend is supplementing. Dancers with imagination and an ability to reflect upon present day issues including two world wars deviated from the traditional margam and from Nayak Naika themes. It was inevitable with the rapid shift in the background of the performers that there would also be a shift in the content of the dance. Dancers sensitive to the gap between their own lives and what they performed on stage started questioning the relevance of the Nayak Naika theme. Mirnalni Sarabhai, trained in Bharatanatyam, Kathakali and Indonesian dances, used the Bharatanatyam technique to tell stories of dowry deaths and suicide, substituting silence in place of music. She handled abstract concepts of Rig Veda scripture, created dance works on ecology, pollution and extended both the vocabulary of dance and its themes, which showed contemporary awareness of social issues. Working with and making a departure from the exclusive classism of Bharatanatyam, Chandralekha started thinking and experimenting in her choreographic work how to explore, expand and universalize the form. She began to see it in relation to other allied physical disciplines in India like yoga, ancient martial arts and allied life activity. A firm believer in the need for resuscitating traditional forms with contemporary energy, she worked towards exploring the structures and internal strength of Bharatanatyam martial forms like Kalari Payatu and theoropathic forms like Yoga to comprehend and interpret the body in a modern sense. She postulated a new non-sublimated content of the dance. Her body of choreographic works ranging from Mangika, Leelavati, Sri, Prana, Yantra, Mahakal to Sharira reveals what new directions Indian dance has taken. Apart from the traditional repertoire of Bharatanatyam, thematic presentations are on the increase. The reason for this is the exponential growth in the number of learners of Bharatanatyam. So many hundred thousand people are learning Bharatanatyam today, worldwide. It's a global form now. These presentations accommodate those who just want performing experience but may not be able to make full-time performing. Group dancing also helps dancers to understand the concepts of synchronization, performing spaces and sharing the spotlight with others. Alongside these, we can also find a growing attraction for another kind of group production based on fusion, not confusion, but fusion, where both the music as well as the dancing are not strictly classical. One example is dancer-actor Shobhna's productions that are a mix of everything from rock music, English narration and fusion movements. Some dance gurus excel in their group productions like Sheila Unikrishnan and Anita Guha in Chennai who generally concentrate on mythological themes. Jayanti Subramaniam has done a production called Jonathan Livingston Seagull where dancers do Bharatanatyam but wear the Odissi hip bells. Lakshmi Ramaswamy works with old Tamil texts. Radhika Surajit combines cinema songs with Bharatanatyam like in the olden days. Anand Shankar Jayanth has done a group work on Navarasa, one called Ode to the Eye and Panch Tantra on Tales for Children. Rama Bhardwaj has presented a work on problems faced by immigrants in the US. Savita Sastri's solo productions are based on new stories written for dance, where it becomes less of Bharatanatyam and more of dance theatre. A future is not far. 
that there will be many more Bharatanatyam dancers than audiences. Apart from the mega productions, small Bharatanatyam groups still delight with traditional themes like Radha Sridhar of Bangalore, Uma Anantani of Ahmedabad, Geeta Chandan of Delhi to name a few. Current rages themes on environment, protection of animals, social maladies like suppression of women, rape, suicide, famine, pollution and so on. Regarding dance technique, there is a greater precision of body, lines that enhances the visual appeal of the dance form. On the other hand, we can often see a craze for speed that is coupled with the pressure to cover the stage space, senseless jatis and tirmanams. Invariably, this results in unfinished adavus as the dancer launches into a frenzy of movements to whip up excitement. The autumn adu running on the toes is very common now. No doubt a mirror is what is happening to society it can be seen. A number of new compositions on social or secular subjects have been adapted to dance. New hastas, hand gestures have taken shape and new vini yogas for using of existing hastas have also been devised. Finer nuances are giving way to the dramatic mode of presentation as the dancer's communication is tailored for audiences in a large setting. On a lighter note, there is anglicization of Abhinaya. Because you have two weeks to learn it, there are gurus teaching Abhinaya in 20 days, which is otherwise a lifetime process. How can one learn Abhinaya in a workshop? It can only be face, not the whole body. With the globalization of Natyam, there are many dancers who do not even speak vernacular. At some rehearsals, dancers practice the contextual dialogues in English for Abhinaya for Tamil or Telugu songs. This does not affect the accuracy of the emotion, but there is a change in its flavor. The third development and trend is costume. Gone is the traditional shining silk look with heavy jewellery. Minimalism is in. They started with many Bharatanatyam dancers who were past their prime and still wish to dance and give a hari a go by. When Bala did for convenience, Chandalekha did for making a style statement. She even bleached her hair white to go against the classical look of dark haired beauty with coal rimmed eye. Instead of using a full heavy headset, some dancers wear just a chutti like Minali Sarabhai and Chanta Rao did long ago. Aharya is such an important part of today's performance ethos, especially in the dance world, where color, texture and fabric play an important role in enhancing the entire experience. Priyadashni Goin goes for specially designed costumes. Malvika Sarukai sports sedate colors while Alamel Walli's preference is invariably traditional. The choice of colors and the style of costume, whether a Padma costume or a sari one, is part of the chemistry the dancer shares with the dance. Many follow time-tested styles and combinations such as yellow and purple, green and red, pink or purple. Then there are those who try to innovate with long-forgotten styles. Bharatnatyam stressed with the Kanchipuram sari is rich and visually appealing. Say Sudharani Raghupati, who has seen the transition of styles over the past 50 years. When I started out, costumes used to be cumbersome. The Devdasis wore real flowers, jadai, pinnal and heavy jewellery. One couldn't really dance with all that. But eventually it became simpler. The pyjama costume used to be tightly fitted. There were hardly any pleats. The colours used were standard, no experimentation. I used to get my sarees dyed thanks to my association with Kamala Devi Chadopadhyay. The colours, however, were gorgeous. Yellows, reds, greens, oranges, dark pink in silk with real gold zari. Now it is touched zari and costumes don't last for more than four performances, she says. Singers like Yana Sundram were trained by dancers such as Bala Saraswati to sing for dance recitals. These days the singers would stay with the dancers for long periods of time. They knew each other so well that the dancer would know when the singer would take up the next line and the singer knew when the dancer lifted a hand to show the next Sanchari. They made a perfect team. 
when bala saraswati danced and gana sundaram sang the audiences were baffled because they did not know whether to listen to the singer or watch the dancer such was the caliber of the singer sangatis must be molded and crafted for dance specially another good example is meera seshadri and mk saroja mk saroja never restricted meera seshadri or set the number of times she could sing each line thus there was a free flowing give and take it cannot be predictable bala used to identify or work on sangatis that was sculpted especially for natya not like it is now singers look at the paper the pauses are all wrong and they sing in the same manner everywhere says nandini ramani who learnt under bala and is a well known critic writer of madras vocalist hari prasad recounts that a lot has changed since the time when singers and instrumentalists used to sit behind the dancer rukni devi arundel is believed to have changed this and musicians were given a place on the left side of the stage today the orchestra had to incorporate different rhythmic patterns musical forms and a variety of instruments such as the keyboard rhythm pad and other electronic instruments earlier the natunar would train and be an important part of the recital nowadays you have natunars you can hire on a freelance basis and the singer keeps the entire kacheri together says nandini ramani a live orchestra lends majesty to a dance recital but dance vocalists take up too many assignments as dancers far out number the company musicians so quality tends to suffer and sometimes vocalists have been known to back out of programs at the last minute leaving the poor dancer in a fix over the last few years dance musicians have also hiked up their fee to an exorbitant amount almost holding dancers to ransom the dancers feel making many opt for recorded music Indian classical dance forms provide various possibilities to explore emotions. Pieces from Kamba Ramayanam or from Jayadev's Geet Govinda are of course stories about Ram and Krishna, gods revered by many. They are tributes to these gods by the devotees. They are in praise of these gods, but equally they are stories of love and union, of pain and separation. They are human stories about separation from loved ones. Rama and Sita getting separated when Sita is captured or Rama's separation from family during exile. and the excitement and intoxication of being in love pieces about krishna and gopis and sakis similarly there are telanas in bharatanatyam dedicated to gods but equally beautifully choreographed telanas exist that make no reference to the divine and instead speak of institutions and emotion human beings such as kalakshetra bilhari telana and rukmini devi natabhairavi telana in addition to the religious and mythological narratives there are many secular aspects to indian dance that may arouse the interest of non religious people these secular aspects do not and indeed should not impinge on the cultural memory of dance pieces which have significant religious spiritual and mythological undertones rather for the religious audience they enhance the enjoyment of the narrative aspects of the dance form as for the secular in the western sense audience they provide other avenues to appreciate indian classical dance the relationship between tradition and modernity in the context of indian dance is an intricate and interesting one on one hand modern dance in india has borrowed a great deal from india's traditions on the other hand the example of bharatanatyam also seems to suggest that the revival of bharatanatyam was perhaps an invention of tradition or indeed the creation of modern dance itself could bharatanatyam then be so modern by emphasizing tradition changes introduced do not seem alien or unfamiliar thus they are more easily accepted by society the boundaries between tradition and modernity become seamless in fact bharatanatyam was modernized in several ways rajiv bhargava states that the generation of new types of collective identities such as the nation is an important feature of modernity by linking the revived dance with the nation a modern collectivity revivalists modernized bharatanatyam educational institutions of dance 
modernized the guru shishya relationship as well the incorporation of ballet into reconstruction of bharatanatyam as suggested by janet oshia is yet another characteristic of modernity finally the presentation of bharatanatyam itself was modernized the costumes were changed the musicians were placed on the side of the stage rather than behind the dancers standing as was traditionally done this also creates a situation of different spatial view or understanding of the same old dance form in a new setting thus we see how a very old dance form looks like it has been reassembled repolished rejuvenated and represented today to the world at large that is bharatanatyam for you all today another development in trend is verbalizing dance with too much talking on stage the content may not be much but it is marketing and branding is future developments in trends emerge out of these program notes become important since most in the audience do not have a clue to what is being done on stage language is another aspect to focus on since most of the songs are in telugu or tamil it is makes it more easy and accessible to those not familiar with vernacular language specific to dance the latest is of course numerous workshops in various dance styles conducted during summer months in india and by visiting artists in usa or uk where items are learnt in 3 to 4 days or sometimes even over a few hours arangetrams have become mega celebrations with four costume changes lavish expenditures in invites gifts and dinner for all present new bharatanatyam molds get created through research also as in case of dr padma subramaniam new terms like neo bharatanatyam and modern bharatanatyam are being created it is generally observed that those outside india of indian origin or foreign origin who learn bharatanatyam wish to adhere to classicism not new bharatanatyam even if they decide to work on the new themes there is also a trend to use multimedia for bharatanatyam recitals like malika sarukai did with vamatara to the light in 19 2014 different dance forms are just suppose and perform together as duets like alamel valli and madhvi mudgal in bharatanatyam in odissi or anuradha vikrant and shama krishna in bharatanatyam in kuchipudi there is also experimentation with music rama vedyanath in performed chitravali to hindustani music and a backdrop of changing miniature paintings to feature guest dancers in big productions is a new phenomenon and helps them get extra recognition Another development is revisiting past with films and archives like recreation of theme based on Devdasi traditions. Recent films on themes are Vara the Blessing featuring Geeta Chandran, Shri Garam about the Devdasi directed by Sharda Ramnathan, produced by dancer Padmini Ravi and our friend This Waiting directed by Justin McCarthy. In my days dance in cinema was dignified. It was a blend of tradition and some modernity. They were complete dances. we had to dance in one take if someone made a mistake it went all over again today there is so much technological help everything is cut and paste even dance that's why you see girls who are not dancers seemingly dancing so well says iconic vijayanti mala bali